Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, Sunday the 17th, and thank you so much to everybody who contributed to our latest Kickstarter. The Fog of War story will be coming your way, and we are delighted to be bringing that to you. Um, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, there is, of course, still three days left, two and a half days left to enter the competition, the Snack Doku um, competition on Patreon, the 100 4x4 puzzles proved so popular, um, which is a delight. And what else we got going on? I mean, those are just some of the things. Chance of Sinar streaming, of course. There's um, crossword videos, loads of stuff on Patreon. Check out the links under the video. There's all our apps. Sven Sudoku Pad, merch, holiday merch, brilliant stuff. Let's Let's have a look at this puzzle, though. This is from Mila Lemaitch, and apologies for the implausible pronunciation of your name, Mila. Um, Draws and Pearls, and Mila has featured on the channel before, so this is a return. Um, and this is an incredibly sparsely populated grid. I am very impressed by a grid with four relatively short thermos and a couple of diagonal lines that solves completely. <laughs> Looking forward to giving this a go, but also rather terrified. Uh, do try it on the link out of the video. I'm going to explain the rules, which are normal Sudoku rules apply. One to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Digits can't repeat on a marked diagonal, so each of these blue lines will represent a set of the digits one to nine. And along a thermometer, digits must increase from the bulb. Um, that's it. Give it a try if you fancy it. I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking. I mean, what on earth do you do in this? Well, the first thing I do, with thermometers at least five cells long, is pencil mark them and I'm sorry if that seems very mechanical um, and pointless but it might I can actually sometimes use it to give me some idea of what's going on okay I mean there are some interesting things arising from that straight away All of these bulbs, they all see each other, and they're all quite small. That's one thing. They all see each other in the sense that the, the two in the bottom row can't be the same as each other because they're in the bottom row. And each of the other pairs shares a line, so they all have to be different. Um, so one of them is at least three. Now, I also see that these cells, it's, it's always worth remembering, it, it's sort of obvious, but worth restating in a thermo puzzle, that digits cannot repeat along the same thermometer. And I mean, that's, as soon as you think about why that is, it's very obvious, digits have to increase from the bulb, so every digit is different, but it does give you some geometrical considerations. So if we look at these two, in row nine, we know immediately they can't go there, and we know immediately they can't go there. And therefore, well, they're both at least four. And I think that means this is at least four. Yeah, either, either one of these two is in that cell, and the other one is in one of these two, in which case it's a number that is at least four, and this digit must be at least four. Or they're both in these two, in which case we're increasing from there at least four to there, which is therefore clearly more than four. So this cell is, is at least four. And we can roll that up the line, taking out the two lower digits of each of each um, cell along the thermo. Now we're suddenly getting reasonably close to a quad or a quint up here. Now maybe I need to find other places where something like this operates. 
None of those three cells can be what are in any of those, for instance. Now let's keep going down here. Those two are in these three. Oh, this one. Well, yeah, okay. How can this cell, I'm going to color these. How can this cell not be one of the purple digits? And it doesn't have to be one of the purple digits. And the way it could be not one of the purple digits if, is if the two purple digits were there in row 9. But in that case, this one would be one of the purple digits and would be at least 4. And then we'd be going at least 5, at least 6, at least 7. No, and the important point about this is not, not just that. It, so I've, I've delineated what happens if that's not purple. And obviously the alternative is that it is purple. There are two purples in this group of cells. But what is interesting about that is that this cell is... I think it's at least two more than this cell. The way you keep this as low as possible is by having it be purple and this not be purple. So the two purples are here and here. And then this could be kept down to four if that was a four. And that's the only way to keep this down to six. There, yeah, there's a strange relationship here. Let me just think about this a bit more. But again, this is at least two more than that. The alternative that that is not this puts this as one of these two. And then this must be at least three more than one of these two. So it's always at least two more than that. So my green cell here is higher than that cell. And therefore, it is not one of these three, which, let's not forget our principle, cannot appear on this thermo because they're already on it. So where do these three go? these blue cells in box 8. Well, it's got to be there, there and there. They can't be in that cell. Even though there is some overlap between 6 and 7 in those cells and 6 and 7 there, we've just actually proved that they can't go in those because of the relationship between one of these and one of these. That's a very odd setup, but that does work. So... These are the blue cells here. And now where does the green cell go in row 9? That's the simple question. And again we come back to this principle that I'm very glad I um, explained or, or highlighted that no digit can go on its own line. So we've worked out that this is more than each of those. It clearly can't go again in its own box and it can't go on its own line. So that green cell goes here. And therefore these are the two purples. And, th and therefore this one is at least four. Look at that. This is four or five, and this is four or five. This one is the same as this one, so it's five or six. 
And this one is at least two more than that. We can roll it up the line, don't we? Six, seven coming out of there. So this green is seven or eight. And this is, rem I don't, I mean, it's a very clever setup. I'm not convinced I've seen it this way before at all. I'm very impressed actually. Now, these blue ones are these blue ones. Um, do I know anything about where they go here? I do know. Oh, look, this has become four or five. Yes, I can roll that down this thermo down to the start. Right, so there's now two candidates on each thermo. Nine has to be in one of these cells. Two candidates on each thermo cell in these bottom two thermos is quite interesting. Haven't used the diagonals at all since that first, well, I haven't used that first observation. So there's still a lot to do in this puzzle, I think. The other of seven or eight goes here, nine goes here, and one low digit between one and six. Now, this is more than the both purples and less than green. All the blues are less than purples. So this is some other color, orange, that goes in these cells and these cells. These are from one, two, three, four, because all blue cells are from that population. Right, come on, let's keep going. And it's, it's fascinating, but I haven't actually got a digit yet. I've done, I've done some very interesting study of this, but not got a digit now. Lots of low digits. Um, this can't be more than six either because of where it is on its thermo. I don't, I don't usually put six digit um, good lifting pencil marks in, but I'm doing it today just because of this um, coincidence of numbers under seven. We've obviously got to find homes for seven, eight, nine in this column. Right, I mean, I found one thing. Come on, let's find something else. What, what do we know about purples, maybe? Or is it blues? Which is more important, do you think? I don't know, Could, can that be blue? It could only be blue if it was that. Ah, okay, let's look up column three. We've got three digits from six, seven, eight, and nine. So we can't have two more up here. And that means that this cannot be six, seven, or eight because you would get two more digits from six, seven, eight, nine if it was. So that is now four or five, and we can roll that back down. That's lovely. Five, four, three. So we get one or two here, and it's the other one or two from the one that appears here. Now that doesn't quite, oh look, there's a one, two, three, four quad. And one of these two is a four, and that gives us a digit. That makes the first purple five and the second one six. We can fill them in here. That's not got a four in it. This one, two, three, four, I mean, the main thing it does is up here. This bulb has become five or six. And that is reducing all our possibilities there considerably. Um, in fact, six is looking at that cell. So seven, eight, nine, just go in now. Oh, it's amazing. I love this. This is so elegant, simple, and just on point. Look at this. This is virtually a, a naked single. It sees that one, two, three, four quad and seven, eight, nine. So that's five or six. And now I've got a pair. Everything else in this column is seven, eight or nine. 
Now, what about blue? Right, these two can't both be blue. And I think that means this is four. Yes, we've learned that four is one of the blue cells down here. So the one it's going to be in this corner is there. Yeah, I, I could have seen that a slightly cleaner way. Five, six, and seven. This is low. And this is probably pointless pencil marking now. Now, can that be five? Yes, we can have five digits from... Oh, look, we've got six on that thermo. Orange has become seven. And that green has become eight. Oh, that's all just given now. Sorry, so now we've got seven, eight, nine filled in this column. And we are down to two cells on each therm... Two, two candidates on each thermo cell, which is incredible, gorgeous, and very, very pretty. Um... And these can't be five, six, or eight, or nine. And interestingly, this digit can't be one or two because it sees both of those which are different. Uh, I don't think that's the way to solve it. Let's just try and keep thinking about how best to solve the puzzle. Six, five, we've got one of these is blue. I don't think, I don't know if that matters anymore. Let's look at the diagonal. Five, nine, and one or two. So, ooh, where does six go on the diagonal? It's either there or there. Eight is in one of those two cells. That's just Sudoku. Might as well mark it since I've seen it. Hmm, what about this five, six pair then? I don't know. I'm gonna uncolor those cells. Um, in fact, I'm gonna uncolor purple because I think that's done its job. Blue I'm still a bit interested in actually. So you can, could that be a four? <coughs> that would make this three, two, one. That would make this three and four. So this would have to be a three. Whichever one of these is blue is in that cell. That's sort of obvious. Oh, yeah, you nearly get that this can't be... Um, okay, I'm just going to colour these red for a moment. Blue and red is the full set of digits 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, that can't, this can't be red because the two reds are there on its same line. So if that was blue, could it, well, could this be blue? Then these would both be blue. I was about to say one of these definitely is a blue four, but actually that's not, that's not available to me as far as I can see yet. If that was three, these would be from one, two, four. It doesn't necessarily make this three. I, I can't quite get at the relationship here. These are different because they're not both blue. So these are, these obviously share one digit because one of the vertical domino is blue, but they don't share both. So either that's a one-two pair, and we know that is a one-two pair. 
Now, is that telling me that this can't be blue? That's really weird. I think it is telling me that this can't be blue. And it's hard for me to see this, but I'll just show you. Imagine that that was blue, but different from this blue. Well, I'm not sure now. I thought, I thought my head, in my head, I thought I could see that this was impossible a moment ago. Partly because that can't be blue. Now I am totally confusing myself. For that to be one of the blues, it must be that cell and it must be a two. Then this would have to be a one four with a two here. This would be three and would be different from blue. Yeah, okay, I can't see that that is impossible anymore. I thought, it was because I thought one of these is a shared cell with one of those. Ah, I think in, my, in, my, in the wrong part of my brain, I thought either the bulb is a shared cell or the other cell is a shared cell. And that's not the appropriate way to thinking of to think about it, because that could be the same as that if they were two. That could be the same as that if they were two. So maybe it's... Can it possibly be worth proving that two is a shared blue digit? Because I think I might be able to prove that now. I'm, I'm really sorry if there is some other ordinary way to go about this puzzle while I'm going off on this crazy tangent, but it's really interesting me now. So, obviously, those are not the same digit as each other. So if there is, and we know there is a shared cell, one of those has to be blue in this column, because there is a third blue in it, and it has to be in those cells. So there is a shared cell between that pair and this pair. And it cannot be the bulbs in both cases. So one of these, two or three, is a shared cell. Ah, I was gonna say it must be two. But what if it is three that is being shared between both of those cells? Yeah, that is a possibility I have to allow for. So what I'm now going to say is either the shared cell between those dominoes is a two, or if it's a three, it has to be in those two cells. And annoyingly, I don't think that leaves me much advanced. Now, I've just noticed that can't be an eight because of the eight in its box. And because of that eight. Oh, goodness. Um, Okay, I couldn't advance there. I, I've tried and tried and I didn't get anything done and I acknowledge that. That is the same as that because they're both different from the bulb in row one. Five, nine, one, two, three. No, I can't, I can't see what to do. I'm being so foolish. Um, One of the reds is a blue. That, that's what I'm clinging on to at the moment. Now, okay, let's say it was a shared three in those cells. That is the, the blue cell. That's actually very plausible. A shared three in both cells. Okay, so where does three go in this box? It goes here. And that's okay, because it's the shared digit. Right, that would make this a four, which would tidy up a lot of stuff up here. And that's if three is the shared digit. Now, if two is the shared digit between these dominoes, 
then that becomes 2. Can this still be 3? That's what I'm wondering. If this is still 3, then that's a 2, that's a 1, that's the shared... No, then there's nothing that can be shared. If that was a 3, how could this pair share anything with that pair? This would be 2 and 1. This couldn't have a 1 on it because that 1 would see this cell. And if it had a 2 on it, it would also have to have a 1 on it. But we can't share two of those cells. This can't be a 3. Wow, that's taken a while, but it's, it's very clever. It's very, it's very clever setting by Mila. That's really interesting. Right, so now we get 6, 5 and 4 up here. Now we just have to use them. We've got a 5 and a 6 in this group of cells. The 5 is not on the diagonal, so the 5 is in one of those two. Oh, there's a 1, 2 on this diagonal, so that is 3 or 4. Um, how are we going to make some progress next? Five is in one of those two cells in box five. Can't be there because of the diagonal. Still haven't worked out the shared digit, of course. And there's only one of them. So at least one of those is a three. And we know that, well, we know that's a one, two pair. There's only one of them. So one of these is a two and one is a three. Otherwise, no. No, that's not, that's not a fair conclusion. Oh, this can't be a 9. That's been available forever as well. <laughs> oh, look at this cell. This sees 1, 2 on the diagonal, 6, 5, 7, 8, 9 in the column. That is now a 3, 4 pair. In fact, it sees 4 there. It's a naked single. Madness. Right. We can take 4 out of those cells, 3 out of that one. We've got one, two, and four to place in column three. If that was one or two, it would complete the set on the diagonal. It would be a blue one from there. Uh, I don't know what that means, probably not much. Three is somewhere around. Um, we need a four in one of those cells. Seven is in one of those two. Oh, there's a six, five pair. So six is one of those three. I'm going to pencil mark the seven that I spotted in one of those two. Now on this diagonal, we've got four, three and a one, two pair. Everything else is from 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that is 8 or 9. That is 7, 8 or 9. Even these are a little restricted. That is just 6 or 8. Oh, that's weird. Um, this is 5, 6, 7 or 9. That's harder to pin down, I think. But there might be some interplay between these possibilities. Like there are only two places five can go, which rules out five from there. This box actually, four, is now definitely in one of these two cells. Five, nine, eight, seven, six. This is low. One, two, three, or four. Um, in its box and with nine on the diagonal. This one, five, six, nine, seven. If that's high, it's a definite eight. Don't know. <laughs> it's it's slowing me up, isn't it? Um Right, let's think about it. If that was eight, then you get nine here, seven, 
five, six. It prescribes the whole diagonal if that happens. Oh, this can't be a nine. Why have I marked that with a nine? It sees five, six, seven, nine. There we go. That's an eight. This is going to do a lot of that diagonal. Not all of it, I think, this time. That can't be six. This can't be six now. This can't be eight. We've got the even numbers on that diagonal. We've got that seven. That gives me seven here. That makes this a nine, I think. I'm not, yes, it sees one, two, three, four in the column. That's fine. This is one, two, or three. It's one of the red digits, and it's the one that's not blue. Hmm, I don't know what that means. Um, that nine is looking up at this eight. Now we need an eight in the top row. That's got to be there. Five and six are definitely in these cells. I haven't used the positive diagonal much, so all the work has been on the negative one. Um, five, again, still in one of those two cells and not resolved. I call it work. A lot of it was just me not spotting very obvious Sudoku inferences and, uh, and drawing them. Um, Still struggling with this thing, but we've got a lot of the thermos done. I mean, this one's complete. This one's complete. This one's 60% complete, and so is that one. There's really only those two starting thermos to go. So the rest of this is mostly classic Sudoku, which I normally think I'm good at, but I'm really struggling here. Now, that can't be 9, 8, 4, or 3. Oh, we need a 7 on this diagonal, and it can't be both 7 and 8 in these two boxes. Oh, no, something's gone wrong. There's nowhere to put 8 on this diagonal. Oh, my giddy aunt. What a mess. How far back do I have to go to fix that thing? I can't believe I got to a point. See, when did I mark these up? I said that couldn't be one, two, three, four on its diagonal. As soon as I fill this in as an eight, I keep eight off the whole diagonal. And yet at this point, it has to be an eight. It sees. Five, six, seven, nine, a one, two pair, and three and four. And yet that eight breaks the puzzle. Wow, I'm really messed up here. Even here, this, even at this stage, that eight breaks the puzzle. So maybe back when I did this three, four pair, what was wrong with that? Not much. I mean, again, in both cases, they see five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the one, two pair on the diagonal. So maybe it goes all the way back to putting 654 on this. I thought I had found that that couldn't be a 3. Now, what was the reason there? That was maybe the shakiest grounds I've had for anything. Because if we had 2 and 1 here... Then I thought we couldn't have 2 and 1 here. Come on, I said if that's a four, no, I said if that's a three, that was what I was trying to rule out. Then we have two, one here. Maybe I should come at it differently. Maybe I should just, no, I want to think about this. If we have three there and two, one here, then three and four are both blue down here. And that has to be four and three. That's what happens. 
If you have 2 and 1 there, that becomes a 2, which goes here. Oh, maybe that's not impossible. Okay. If you have 3 and 2 and 1 here, Yeah, then this is two and three. That is possible. Okay, I ruled that out spuriously. Oh, okay, okay. But let's start with this diagonal and where eight goes, which I've now discovered to be very important. It's only got one place. Let's put it in. Now, what's this? This is not nine, eight, seven, six, five, or one, two on the diagonal. So that is three or four. And this is where the problem comes over here now, doesn't it? This is currently not 1, 2 on the diagonal, or 9, 8, 7, 6. This one is not 9, 8, 7, or 1, 2 on the diagonal. So now I've got myself a little 3, 4, 5, 6 quad, including 3 on the diagonal, and that becomes 4. Now I can't have 4 here, and I've got a 3, 5, 6 triple, and that becomes 4. And now I do get 3 there where I forbade it earlier. Um, we get a 3, 4 pair here. Now, that is 2 or 1. The other one of 2 or 1 is in these cells, joining with that in a virtual pair, making that a 3. So this, which can't be a 1 on the diagonal, is a 2, and that is the blue number that repeats amongst the red cells. So let's leave it like that. I think this is working now, and I think it's better. Oh, goodness, that took some fixing. This is a head-wrecking puzzle. Those are now 179. That's a 2. That can't be 7. 7, 8, 4, 6, 5, 1 and 2. That is 3 or 9. Thank you, 8, on the diagonal for clearing that up. You were very generous there. Now, which diagonal do we think about next? This one? Or not a diagonal? We place three in the middle box. That's where it is. One, two, and nine still to place. One of those two that I've just marked has to be a two, so that's not two. It's clearly not four or three now. That is a naked one. So now there's no one in those cells. It's a two, nine pair, and that's one in column six. Okay, we will go slower to get things righter. 3, 1, 5, 6, 7, 2, 9 pair, that's 8, that's 4. This is not, well, I don't know that I trust my corner marks. I do, because there's a 5, 6 pair still there. So now it can't be 4. We get 3 or 7 in the corner. These are from, that can't be 8. Oh, it can't be 9 either. That's become a 7. Now I can finish the middle, well, I can finish the 9, 8, 7 in the middle column. I've done that. This is a 5, 6, 9 triple. That one can't be 5 or 9 on the diagonal. So we've got the 6 onto this diagonal. 5, 6, 1, 8, 9. That is 2 or 7. The That is 2 or 3, and that is 3 or 4. Now, which... Which triple have we formed here? Or have we got a chocolate teapot quadruple? We formed a 237 triple. That can't be four, that can't be four, that can't be four, that's correct. Okay, four there, three and four in blue. Um, that is one or nine. Four's in one of those cells. <laughs> Now we've gone backwards, like now the only two numbers not done on the thermos are that 5-6 pair, and they could be either way round. That's funny. Um, right, 2-3-7 combo. Says that can't be 3, that's totally uninteresting. 4-7-5-6-8, um, right, let's just keep going now, we're, we're getting this done. It's brilliant. It's a brilliant puzzle. One, four, two. 
Oh, that can't be three. Is, is this the only place that can be three on the diagonal? Or is it possible to be in the corner? Hmm. Okay, the corner can't be five or six. In fact, that's a five, six pair. So this is down to three. Yeah, that's a three. Um, what then with threes? No, let's just keep going on the diagonal. One, two, three, four, all done. That can't be five or six in its box. So that's seven, eight or nine. This can't be nine, seven or five. I seem to have pencil marked that in a past life. Five, seven, nine. So eight is in one of those two cells. Six is in one of those two. Four, three, two. We've got a five somewhere here. We've got a six somewhere here. Ah, oh, it's not giving up, is it? It really isn't. Hmm. Seven has to be in one of those. Now, how can I use that? Eight, nine, seven. Well, this is five or six, therefore. I can use that. Well, it never could have been seven. Two in this row seems to have to be here. That's just logic. Okay, that's fine. Now, two's in one of those two cells. Where's, where is it on this diagonal? One of those two. Okay, two, three, four, five, six. Eight has to be in one of those. These are from 179. That looks like a 1279 quad now. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So these are from 456. That's forming a triple here. Is this getting anything done? 45698. These are from 1237. One of those is a seven, though, so those can't have a seven in. Now, what's happening in the top? We've got four, five, six done. I don't know. This is why pencil marking doesn't necessarily help clarify and sometimes helps obfuscate. Um, Is it all about the diagonals or is it all about the other ordinary Sudoku? Ah, look, this is naked. That's what it's all about. Four, nine, seven, eight in the column and a five, six pair. One, three in the row. That's a two. That's three. That's going to undo us. We get one there. Three on the diagonal keeps three out of the corner. Seven and two are done. Right. One and three. Two and nine. This is now a one seven pair. So in the top corner, we've got an eight nine pair, I think now. Um, how's that doing on the diagonal? Nothing interesting yet. We need a three in one of those. We need a two right there. We've got four twos looking into box six. That's the last, well, it's not the last two in the grid. There's the last two in the grid. We get a one nine pair, beautiful one nine pair in column one, because that fixes two cells in box one. We get eight on the diagonal, so that becomes six. And that's not. That becomes five, that's nine, and both diagonals are fully complete now. That must lead us to a solution here, must do. Thermos are finished. Rows one, two, three are finished. I bet I can finish this box. Well, I can put the five in. I can't actually finish that box yet. Five, eight, seven here. Chocolate teapot, useless triple. Three, four, six here. I can put the three in, but not the four, six pair. Let's look along this row. That can't be eight and that can't be eight. So that gives me all sorts of eights. Unwinds the teapot. Five, one, three. Uh, five, two, one, eight, three. This one is an eye wing seven. Now we've got six, four, and nine to put in the box. That is a six. It sees the other two. 
Then I can do nine and four, six and four. Um, I have to start this side with nine and one and go back the other side and finish off. What a brilliant puzzle. That's just extraordinary. Excellent stuff. Um, thank you very much to Mila. That's a really interesting puzzle. Draws and pearls. Um, thank you, as always, for watching us on the channel. I hope you had a go at that. Maybe made one less mistake than me and uh, enjoyed it even more, which would be hard because I enjoyed it a lot. Hope to see you soon again on the channel. Bye for now.